Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. Now I've got a really interesting pattern for you today. This one was created by Lynn Phillips, probably in the 1920s. So a little bit about Lynn. He was from British Columbia. He was somewhat of a conservationist. So in 1917, he noticed one of the interior lakes in British Columbia, Knopf Lake, was just, you know, begging for trout, some interior trout. So he planted nine ripe rainbow trout. Their Department of Fisheries didn't open the lake up for fishing until 1920. And when they did, there were 15 and 20 pound trout being caught out of there. So obviously, the word got out. This lake became very popular for interior trout fishing. And one of the flies that we think Lynn Phillips came up with was this one called the Pazooka. Now, even back then, there wasn't a whole lot of information on it. It did show up in a lot of folks' fishing logs and journals saying, hey, we had a great day out here on the Pazooka. Caught some four and five, seven pound trout with it. So it was probably a pretty popular fly for about a decade or so, but its last reference was in the early 30s. So from the 30s on, it was pretty much a forgotten fly until it showed up in a 2008 book, uh, Fly Patterns of British Columbia. Now, I picked up this book when I was researching Roderick Haig Brown and his Golden Girl, one of my favorite streamers. So aside from the couple of paragraphs in this book on this fly, there's really nothing else out there on it. So I'm considering this one largely a forgotten fly. And that's a shame because it's really a cool looking pattern. It's typically tied pretty big, I mean, according to this recipe, either in a six or an eight. So that's a big wet fly, uh, maybe a stillhead fly, but I'm gonna tie it and fish it here on the East Coast, basically as a small streamer. Now, I've never fished this pattern, never even tied it until today, but it's a really cool looking pattern. No exotic materials, pretty easy to tie, and I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, a pazooka. I'm willing to bet a lot of you folks have never heard of this fly until you're watching this one right now. Now, the recipe calls for this in two sizes, a six or an eight. This is a size six, it's a two X long, and I'm using black. 70 denier. You could certainly use thicker thread for this one, but put a base down all the way to the start of the bend. Now the tail on this, golden pheasant tippets, and you'll want to take, you know, two feathers. This one is a pretty small one. The one we're going to put for the bigger wing, we'll use one of the bigger feathers. So yeah, I'm going to take um, about 10 or so, and I will just grab them by the tips, reach in here and snip off that right there, pull the main part of the feather out, and now I should have about what I want, which is going to be about right there. Not a real long tail. It's not stubby, but it's a hook gap or maybe slightly longer than a hook gap. So I'm going to go a little bit longer than that right there. Okay, I think that is gonna look fine. A couple more wraps and we're secure. Go ahead and bury these tips in right here. You don't have to worry about a perfect taper. We've got uh, a pretty big, thick body we're putting on this. But first, let's put the rib in. So red or orange floss. And since this is a pretty big one, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do double it over. So I'm just gonna catch my standard floss in right here and then pull it up, get my tips pretty much aligned. Okay, that works right there. Now I'll just catch this in because I'm gonna wrap you know, both of these at the same time just to give me a little bit thicker of a rib. Okay, now you can take your thread all the way back up front where we're gonna catch in the green wool. Original recipe calls for green wool. I'm using a wool yarn, and this is a three strand, but I am not going to split it up. I want it to be pretty thick. And the one I just tied, I think thicker looked a little bit better. So go ahead and catch this in all the way to the back. Again, you don't have to worry about it being perfectly on top. Take your thread back up front. Now let's wrap this, this green. And this yarn will kind of act like a, a thread. If you spin it clockwise, it's gonna tighten up, make a cord up on you a little bit. If you spin it 
Counterclockwise, you're going to get it to lay flat. So keep that in mind as you're going. Just try to keep the body even. I'm trying not to let it spin too much. And a wool body like this, it's going to be fuzzy, and that's fine. That's why we use wool. Okay, now let's catch this off up here with a couple of wraps. Okay, snip this off. Maybe a couple extra wraps to lock this in. Now, take this red floss, and be careful with it. This is a, a silk type floss, so it's, it'll, will, you know, nick on you if you're not careful. But I'm putting these pretty tight. I want them to lay a little bit flat because I want them to be kind of fat. Evenly spaced wraps up. And then again, pretty tight, which will give you a little bit of segmentation. Okay, when you get it up there, go ahead and capture your floss off. Two or three tight turns should work. We'll snip this excess. Now take another golden pheasant tippet or a feather that has the golden pheasant tippets on it. This time I'm taking a much bigger one. See these black bars here are, are a lot you know, farther apart than on the tail. We're gonna tie this in right here and we want it about as long as the body, at least to the hook shank, the back of the, the hook. So I think that is gonna work right there. And what I'll do here, just take uh, a good number of them and just try to pull them off and this, I'm going to spin them around in my fingers just to try to break up that, that binding on them. So let's catch this one in right about here. Keep it on top. Okay. You don't want them sticking that far up, so I'm going to put a, a couple of medium wraps right there. See if I can just get them to lay flatter. And that's fine right there. Do have a little bit of excess right here. I'm gonna need to snip. Now, one of the most interesting things, other than this fancy colored fly, is the collar hackle. It's a rump feather from a ringneck pheasant. So one of these, it's mostly got a lot of, um, you know, this marabou, schlappen like stuff on the bottom, but we're just gonna use the tips. So go ahead and strip off all that fluff Get a feather, and then it looks about like this. And this is not the easiest thing to wrap as a hackle. So, see what I did there? I just split it up. I've got the tip, and then I pulled some of them back. And I'm gonna catch them in right here. Now this is a very thin feather, so you can't put a lot of uh, torque on it, but you can just, you know, bend it back and get a couple of tight wraps. And now I've nicked my thread right there, which is kind of annoying. You see my fuzzy thread? But if that ever happens to you, I'll show you what I do to try to fix that. Just pull some out, and we're gonna have to spin some wraps to try to work through that fuzzy part. And don't worry about your head being too messy. We'll bind all that in, and a lot of that's gonna be covered with the hackle anyway. So, okay, take a look at my thread. Have I gotten through the rough part? I think so. Still got some fuzzies right there, but we can live with that. And the cool thing about this, you don't really need hackle pliers because you've got a big long stem to work on. So I'm gonna put probably two wraps. And if you have a pheasant skin and you don't know what to do with these big long feathers, well, this is one of the things you can do with them. You can make some collar hackles. I uh, think like the carry special, some of these big flies, big wet flies and streamers that have big, long, swept back collar uh, hackle. So that was two wraps right there, and that's about all I can get, but that's really all I need. And it's a big buggy mess right now, but hey, that's okay. Just pull this back, and we're gonna build our head. 
you know, it's, a, it's a, you know, a big wet fly or a streamer. So you can build a pretty big head. I'm gonna go back up on here just to make sure I get these really caught in. And when I let go of my, with my material hand, most of these feathers should be swept back pretty well. So there you go. They are. Now I just gotta work on the head. That head's a little lumpy. But a few extra wraps, and this is where, you know, using a, a 140 or 210 denier thread would, would come in handy. Okay, that head is a little bit lumpy, but you know what? We can hide that with our UV resin. Give us a nice big, hard, shiny head, and you won't see any of those imperfections. So that's it. The Pazooka, pretty neat looking pattern. I think this is gonna be pretty effective here in the East Coast, so we're gonna give it a shot. Drop of head cement right there, and this thing's going in my box. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.